All right, Campbell's Comments, New Zealand Show, back for another week with the new NZB standard bread manager, Cam Bray. Hello, mate. G'day, Paul, after a bit of a false start, but we'll, we'll get there. Generally, the false starts are my fault, but this was a fault at the Kiwi end, and it actually wasn't your fault either. We've had the fire alarms going off there in the building fire for a bit. going off. Thankfully, uh, this part of the building hasn't burned to the ground, so we're safe. And we might preface that by saying that if it goes off again... They actually know the issue. The f- place is not on fire. It's just one of the guys in the IT department, which worries you a lot, uh, is hitting the wrong button. He's up to something. Yeah, no. But anyway, we're, we're back on track. Right. Uh, we started it off, mate. Uh, one, congratulations on becoming the standard bread manager too. I think that's a you know, nice feather in your cap and um, you know, good, good uh, I suppose, positivity from NZB. Yeah, no, very pleased to have the title. Yeah, it's... Um it's uh, it's it's good, you know. It's um, uh, I've sort of probably done a, not to say that I've done the manager job for a while, but I've sort of been the key point of contact probably for a lot of the standard bread people for a while. So, uh, you know, onwards and upwards, and uh, as I say, we'll just keep pressing on. Yep. Any mistakes now? They all go to Cambrai as the manager, not James Jennings. So Jimmy's happy about that. He will be probably. <laughs> uh, recently over there for the Weanling sale, successful sale, um, average up. Four grand, I think it was from eleven to fifteen thousand. Um, really positive sale and really good to uh, be a part of it as an Australian. Yeah, it's good. To, it was good to have that um, that uh, border back open, and, and and I think having the hotels done nothing but complement the the whole process. Uh, so as I say, we had as you did, Paul. We had four or five good nights where we were, you know, went out for meals and caught up and. You know, had a bit of fun and hilarity, which is good, and in the process managed to have a very, very successful sale. So I think by and large, a fair percentage of that uh, average increase would come from a bit of the Australian spend, just having a bit more competition in that certain part of the market, um, which is good. Um, I can say as of Thursday or Friday last week, now every we are 100% sold, that sale's 100% sold. Um, that's, so that that's, was, that's huge, isn't it? Hundred percent clearance. It, it is huge. You know, uh, to to think that we, I think we finished out at the third of June, which was only a few days ago. I know, but it, we were at ninety eight percent. But because of the number we're working with, we only had to sell two other horses, and we made the hundred. So um, worked out. That's the way it went. Um, the demand was there, particularly in the ring. With I think we sold ninety two percent, I think, or ninety three percent at auction. Um, yep. Which is good, um, and I think we cleaned up about five or six that night before we uh, knocked off too. So, yeah, it's 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 a system that works. I think people people like buying at that point of the market. You know, for a long time it was sort of seen as sort of a, almost a double negative to a certain degree, where it seemed like they were trying to compete with with breeders. But I'd say to be fair, in a lot of cases now, majority of those weanlings are service fee or better now. Oh yeah, well and truly. I mean, Captain Crunch is incredibly well received. Um, you've got those stats there by looks, but even lather up. But it was pointed out to me by a Kiwi too. Kiwis don't like first season sires. That was a no, unique, not as that, a rule. Yeah, that was a not unique a part about that sale. Like you've got lather ups, Captain Crunches um, there having their first season. The machetes were unproven still um, at that stage, yep. and there was huge demand on all those horses. Well, when you look at uh, okay, when we look at size, sale size of average three or more sold, uh, Captain Crunch he averaged thirty five thousand. Wow. Had four four horses, um, four horses offered on the day, four sold, um, with the top lot being fifty five thousand out of Princess Arts. Yep. Um, uh, you look at looks at always you Mickey. He had five sold to an average of twenty six thousand six hundred. Uh, Major had fifteen, sold fifteen. For nineteen thousand, Sweet Lou sold offered fourteen on the day. Uh, offered fifteen, sold fourteen for an average of seventeen five. Yep. So, like when you look at it, it's, it's big return on investment. Um, eight offered, eight sold. Lather up for nine thousand five hundred yep. with a top price of thirty two thousand. So that shows you that there is a lot of a lot of. Um, a lot of confidence in those young sires now that someone's prepared to pay up to 32000 for for a first season sire where predominantly in New Zealand we, we haven't sort of seen that sort of behaviour same with Captain Crunch to pay $55,000 uh, but admittedly both both the Captain Crunches and the Lather Ups were exceptional types I yep. thought 
I don't know what you thought, but um, I know crunches look very, very tight, be very typical of each other, um, which is always a good trait you see in a young sire. Yeah. Um, and lather up, real sort of speedy. You can sort of see why he was a fast horse because you can see the, the speed sort of type horses. What we've seen. And the the, the Colts look strong. They looked uniform. The lather ups. I did see a little bit more of those. The unique part about the the lather ups, when I say first season sire, didn't stand in New Zealand either. That's the no. unique part about him that, you know, at least Crunch, a lot of people would have gone and seen Crunch um, in New Zealand because he was standing there, but, uh, although was he frozen? No, he was there. He was no, actually, he was, he, was there. Yeah. he was actually in the South Island. Yeah. So, yeah, so that that can make a little bit of a difference, I think, sometimes when people see him, because I've seen Lather Up a little bit. That's probably why I talk about him a bit more, other than I'm sponsored by Woodlands, I'm not stupid, but um, he's a cracker of a horse, um, strong and like what exactly what you said, Kim, you can see how he can go fast because you look at him and he just looks fast. He is fast. Speed, yeah. He actually is fast around his paddock. So, you know, he has that tick about him. Um, you said there about the crunches and uh, lovely types. And I was always told that a stallion will throw a mark. Captain Crunches have two-tone tails. That's their, their, their mark. Yeah. It's the one thing that we, we picked up very quickly when they are in the sail ring. Didn't see it when we were looking at them, but once they're in the sail ring, and, uh, yeah, they're incredibly well received. So, um, no, I think it was great. Trotters are a little bit of a worry still in New Zealand, Cam. Um, you know, overall, they sold. I think it's very, very hard to draw a conclusion on the trotters from that sale because, to be fair, um, uh, in the greatest respect, they weren't the strongest of pedigrees, a lot of them. No. Um, and they were, they were, uh, you know, it was a new season side too, and what the hell. Yep. Um, and, and look, he, he offered 15, sold 14 at auction. Um to an average of six and a half thousand. Uh, sorry, wrong horse. That was what the hell. Speeding spur. Yeah, uh, his average wasn't high, but um, in fairness, uh, he sold eight. We've only passed the one in um, at that stage early, early this week. Well, it's since sold the whole lot. Yep. Who's since sold? Um, I just think the trotting gate isn't probably got the money in it like a lot of others have. And and to be fair, the pedigrees in comparison to their pacing counterparts through that wheeling sale were nowhere near as good. Yep. Um, so you've got to take, you've got to compare apples with apples, um, uh, not apples with pears. So they were probably always going to look a little bit behind the eight ball at that sale, but just because of the, the quality of pedigrees through the through the winglings. And there was probably one of the the sale toppers as far as a trotter goes was withdrawn um, that was closely related to Del Boy um, Speeding Spur. So he was withdrawn, unfortunately. So that can drop it down a little bit, but. Um, I'm but at the end of the day, probably one of the one thing you can take away from it is people prepared to buy them. Um, yep. Uh, and that and that's and that's for a young stallion who's you know in a lot of terms a colonial breed. I know I don't like that term, as you don't either. But um, uh, people were prepared to buy them, um, and that at the end of the day is the greatest you know um, advertisement for a stallion. If someone's prepared to give them a crack, and they're out there and amongst the racing population, that's all you want. And um, Pastor Stevens was still. Received okay as well, but yeah. first season sire. Um, and he, again, a horse that you guys didn't get to see because I think he was only frozen semen that year. Um, but he yeah. and he's another Great. horse, I think, once you see him in person. And I encourage a lot of the Kiwis, we go there to Wienland sales. I know there's a few farms, got a few things planned this year. So perhaps mark a, you know, on the calendar or make some phone calls in for some stallion parades early in the season and get out to see some of these horses once they're in Oz because, um, yeah, a bit of exciting times, albeit uh, a bit of tumultuous over here at the minute as well with HRA and their their levy that they're trying to impose and that so it's a bit of a watch this space with service fee announcements and things like that over here it's a it's a little bit is it making much of a ripple are you getting much feedback over there Cam at all uh well I, probably because I probably sit so close to it and I can see what's going on but probably the average punter possibly doesn't quite see it like I do yep. but um yeah, it's got to have impacts, uh, and I can just see even for your industry the impacts. You know, from from being um, probably the shining light um, to now this dark cloud hangs over it. You know, it just it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But anyway, that's that's just my personal opinion. We're not here to be controversial. I will say on loose lines tonight, Nick Cooper is going to be joining me from Harness Breeze Victoria. He might be controversial, so we'll just see how he goes. He wasn't that impressed, Cam. You've got to go and have a look at the photo I put up, too. Sent me a moto, photo. Could I have found a newer photo of him? It's a lovely photo, I thought. It was. Um, it might have been taken back in 1930s, but it's just a lovely photo of him. I thought I must must use that to, to promote him. Uh, what else is going on over there in New Zealand, mate? You had some good two-yards, Vincent um, Cornella, um, the sapling stakes on the weekend. So good yeah. weekend of racing for people. It's a pretty good weekend for us for the young horses at Ashburton, um, Queen's Birthday, which um, 
with the change of season, we've consciously tried to um, build that day back up. For what was it? What was a big day once upon a time? But the Sapling States, yeah, won by two with Quinn Allen, sorry, by uh, Vincent uh, Venki B, which um, is uh, out of Imki B, which um, Mark's got a gelding by uh, Vincent, uh, and then the the the, uh, the second place horse, which was Vincent out of I'm So Lucky, which Funnily enough, it's actually um, been syndicated by the Alabar Nivliar oh, yeah. um, themselves. So that's good to see. They've had a lot of luck, That's the, those syndicates. So it's good to see. And uh, funnily enough, rounding out the trifecta is a Peter's delight. So there you go. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. Um, it was funny when... But, like, there were some other nice races on that card. There was a, a two-year-old Phillies race, the two, the Helen Pope two-year-old Philly Stakes, which... Um, Again, there's some nice horses amongst them. And particularly, one I wanted to highlight with you was a horse called Millwood Nike, uh, which is a two-year-old by Captain Treacherous out of a mare called Albuquerque. Now, Albuquerque is for sale currently on Gabble House, which finishes tonight. I don't know when this airs, but um, from 7 o'clock New Zealand time. So it might be too late, but it might be just enough time. No, no, I'm going to put this up as breakfast TV in a minute, so it'll go straight up. Oh, good. So, yeah, so okay. we'll, we'll put yeah, it no, up. Good, so, good. so 5 o'clock Australian time, go to Gabble House. Dot com, uh, dot com, it is actually, isn't it, Gavel House? Yeah, uh, go standardbread.gavelhouse.com. Yep. Um, and you'll see there Lot 7, Albuquerque. So she's uh, currently just short of her reserve. And uh, one another positive thing about that is that she is in foal to Captain Crunch. So we've just come off the back of talking about Captain Crunch. Um, she's got car- a current, probably one of the nicer two-year-old fillies going around at the moment, running for her, which is now a new stakes winner for the mayor, which... I think Millwood Nike is only the second foal of the mare, so plenty of upside there. Absolutely. So that's on Gavel House. Uh, we work Gavel well together. Right? We didn't. You didn't tell me about that when we were waxing on about Captain Crunch. We just do a free little, free little plug. But um, that's a key. I think there's a lot of mares getting moved around. There's a lot getting moved around here in Australia um, at the minute. There's quite a few sales coming on, but. I find it very positive. Uh, I wear another hat, like the Nutrient hat the other day. The, the prices on some of these mares are really good. So in the old days, you see mare for sale, people just wanted to get rid of them, whereas now people are literally putting on gavel houses, Nutrient, APG sale coming up as well to, I suppose, give someone else a chance, try and get a little bit of money while there's still some money in there. And they're a great opportunity for people to get into the breeding barn at, I won't say cheap price, because they're not cheap, a lot of these mares, but at a, a reasonable price for a very well-proven mare. Well, you know, and, and you use that mare for example. Um, uh, she is a eight-time winning one fifty-eight mare by Better's Delight, um, who's uh, full sister to uh, Alberto Contador, who is a very, very good horse here in New Zealand. Went to Queensland, did a good job. Um, it's the same family as Matt Gregor, um, Miss Ruby Sunshine. They're all sort of quite good horses, and and from the same family as a Harker Lass. Now, that mare. With now probably I think it's only a third foal, fourth foal, insider and by Captain Crunch, uh, at twenty four, you know, currently at twenty four thousand dollars is is a gift in my opinion. Yeah. Um, she 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 could be entitled to make double that really. Um, uh, especially now you've got a brand new stakes winner on the page, um, and the talk from the stable was that it's a very very nice two year old and and that's something that probably does carry a lot of weight being the stable it's in. Yeah, definitely. Oh, well, that's exactly right. If it's if it is a nice horse, it's going to get every chance to prove how nice a horse she mm. is. She'll, if she's good enough to travel, she'll travel. And imagine that you buy a horse, and all of a sudden they're traveling to Australia and taking out a nice two-year-old race over here. Well, there you go. There's Although, just the upside. There's so much upside. You know, it's unbelievable. Yeah, the powers of B, mate. It's got an NZ next to its name. Might not be allowed in the country before long. So you never know what will happen there. But I shouldn't say that. Am I allowed to say that? I said it. It doesn't matter. I'm sure. Yeah, it's I'm a, sure. It's certain... a bit like saying no offense after you offend someone. <laughs> Um, it doesn't yeah. mean anything at the end of the day. But, you know, hey, um, a horse like that, even if it doesn't travel to Australia, um, you know, there's enough going on here in New Zealand. There's enough riches in New Zealand alone. Um, you know, it's always bloody nice to be able to go and rob some um, good Australian money because um, the exchange rate's fantastic coming back our way. Uh, you know, the, the, a nice two-year-old is always going to be a nice two-year-old. It's one of the things um, I spent some time in the car with Martin Pearson. I'm going to catch up with Martin very, very shortly. We're going to actually touch on the Road Cup as well. But talking to Martin from the size, like his problem trying to sell people, make sure people pay up for this, the New Zealand size stakes and the importance of it. There was actually a race um, at Road Cup night 
that had two nominations initially, and Martin made a heap of phone yeah, yep. made a heap of phone calls and got the race off the ground. Uh, Kiwis need to pay up for these futurities, but they also need to keep the horses there in New Zealand to make your racing viable to tick it over. Yeah, it's great to sell them to Oz or America um, and make a little bit of coin, but the industry needs to keep flourishing. I think you've got seven races on Friday night coming, which is a disappointment, disappointing number. So I think you, know, you need to be able to keep those horses for a little bit as well. So these these size stakes races that they've got and these sapling stakes, like you said, the races that um, Mark and them are targeting, um, they're key for people over there to reinvest in and keep the product in New Zealand, which will make in New Zealand weanling sales, yearling sales, uh, the whole thing a lot more viable. 100% agree with everything you're saying. Um, one thing to note, though, is at least, uh, you know, under the the current New Zealand size stakes model is you pay as a weanling, you sustain as a yearling, you sustain then as a two-year-old, three-year-old, et cetera, et cetera. If you make at least a minimum foal and yearling nomination, you are then eligible for all the other races. So by that means, you know, you, you, you can you can pay foal and yearling and you're eligible for the Northern Mares Classic, the, you know, all the sophomores and, and all the additional races outside the two- and three-year-old series. So at a minimum, and that does apply to a few, you know, especially particularly Australians, if you have the vision of selling a horse, they'll be the two cheapest payments you'll ever make. Mm. Um, because if you don't make it, and then you end up in the situation where your horse is suitable for a, a race like the Uncut Gems, I think we've discussed the yep. Uncut Gems before, yep. um, it's $2,500 um, late payment, right, to get into the race. Now that's for every race, Oh, yeah. You don't just pay that. That's it. You pay once every race. You need to pay that. So when you think about the foal and yearling nomination, it makes it makes absolute sense to at least pay that because you're eligible for a lot of money later on in life. It's a it's a funny one the way you're educated. Like my, me and Marie, we breed three horses a year. I I don't know if you even have to tick a box anymore. But once upon a time you had to tick a box. You want to pay it up for Vic bread, and it was just automatically tick. You know, uh, there's been a heap of races come and go, Breeders' Crowns and those sorts of things. Um, you know, we don't do that. The size stakes and what it does, uh, it's incredible. And you, and you can make something very special of it. So it's one of those things I implore the Kiwis to, to look after it because it's, it's basically the futurity of the breeders to put back into race series to encourage people to keep breeding to continue the whole product. So it's a no-brainer for mine. Oh, yeah. And look, I, I, I sit on the New Zealand Size Stakes Board, and there's a number of things we're doing to try and expand that other racing um, because we can we, we see a, a great benefit uh, from our own brand as a Size Stakes Board in those uncut gems type racing, such even great betting event, events. Um, and it does give an additional pathway for someone who isn't an aspirational or isn't probably at that quite that level of the aspirational type horse um, that there is you know a series and pathway of, of racing in amongst all the other semi-classic racing to give you you know a good monetary go at that sort of level as well um so like you know that, that's something to, to be bear in mind going forward is that you know for god's sake pay that foal and yearling um and at, at worst case scenario you're eligible for a significant number of other races when you're you know um you know, four year old and older, or et cetera, you know, anything basically. No, so. de definitely. Um, when I was over there, mate, it was good to catch up with a lot of the love um, Kiwis, uh, Graham Hand and Regan Todd, the great Timmy White. I, had, I was fortunate enough to have tea with uh, Timmy a couple of times, but um, the New Zealand show, we want to keep it going. It'll probably go fortnightly at the minute while it's a little bit quiet, but leading into breeding season, the other side will really start to, to ramp it up and um, keep things notable. That's sort of the way I want to go. But from New Zealand's NZB's point of view, you've got Gavel House every other week, I believe. Yep, every fortnight, yep. So we want so to keep on top of that. Stick away. Yep. And uh, if you and I come on, we'll probably be promoting a few of those horses. We want to try and uh, promote what Gavel House do um, because there's a lot of horses. I think there's a lot of people don't sort of look at Gavel House from time to time and miss some of those horses as well. So that's something, when it's not the Queen's birthday and you can actually work on a Monday, you know, we could probably do something there and uh, promote it a couple of days ahead of schedule, mate. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, exactly, and it's just something that we just need to, to try and um, build into people's everyday lives, that it's just, it's every fortnight, you know, um, for a lot of people it is probably part of their life now, but, um, 
you know, the, it's great, particularly for a lot of your Australian probably clientele uh, or, or, or um, followers that there is a number of racehorses on there quite regularly. And, um, you know, I mean, they are probably horses that have, A, met their mark here in New Zealand or, or just looking for a freshen up, which you can get an affordable horse uh, through that website um, that, that is proven to be reasonably competitive over your part of the world. I think, you know, we looked at a horse there um just trying to think of the name of it now. Uh, it was sold recently, uh, only a couple of months ago. Won fresh first up at Ballarat, I think, for Emma Stewart Stable. Oh yeah, um, and then it won it, what, or something. I think, yeah, and it, I think missed, it was yeah. and it won at Echuca its next start. Yeah, so like it just shows you um, by meeting its mark here in New Zealand, it does there's still a lot of life left of it, and, and especially in your part of the world, you know. Yeah, well, it's proven that in it's one of the frustrating things I have, but we seem to have a lot of very lowly races that cater for those horses. Um, there's mm. a lot of Tasmanian horses that couldn't even get warm in Tassie, and they're coming out here at the minute in the off season and uh, just knocking up wins. So yeah, yeah, it's it's clearly a plus sign. So it's probably one of those things I said to the you know say there before. Try and keep your racing product as long as you can. Don't be scared to put them on gavel out. So when you um, think they they may be on their mark, if you like, um, and probably can't go any further in New Zealand because there is a home for them in Australia and the likes of Summit Bloodstock and a few of these other guys just constantly look at it. Um, and they're prepared to buy them either out of Gavel House or over the phone, uh, making phone calls. So we want them all to go through. Ga- uh, we want them to go through Gavel House for NZB, though. But within, even within New Zealand, you know, a horse in Canterbury that's met its mark doesn't necessarily mean that it, it could fit it nicely in Southland or in the yep. um, North Island. Um, and then the same again, if if, if it's uh, done its dash there, well, you know, we it's a big wide world out there, and for. You know, for for really six or seven thousand dollars, it can be in Australia and and racing a fortnight later. No, definitely. Cam, thank you very much. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Paul. Congratulations, and uh, well done for giving me about ten minutes without the fire alarm going off. Too, I'm pretty impressed with that. Well, I'm pretty happy. The, the, the fire, I can see the fire. It's at the other side of the building. But look, we'll get this done. That's the main thing. Um, is to get the interview done before the place burns to the ground. Make sure you put a hat on. You don't want that hair getting burnt as you're going out. <laughs> I tell you what, if it burns the hair, I'm in deep trouble. You are indeed. Cambrai, thank you very much. See you, mate.